Hello, I'm here today to talk to you about the advantages of vacuum conditions in FTIR spectroscopy. These advantages become obvious when you're looking at the single channel spectra upon evacuation of the system. Over time, with decreasing pressure, you can clearly see how the signal is increasing. At the same time, the disturbances coming from water and CO2 are drastically reduced. This gives you an overall better signal to noise ratio and very stable background conditions. This is crucial if you want to detect weak signals or if you want to measure over a longer time period. But where do these advantages come into play? An obvious example of where the reduction of the disturbances coming from water and CO2 is beneficial would be a process where these two gases are released. This is, for example, the case in a methanol fuel cell where the alcohol is oxidized. Fuel cells and uh, electrochemistry in general are very hot topics at the moment due to the ongoing battery research. The stable background conditions come into play when you want to perform long measurements. This could be, for example, step scan measurements that can last for several hours. Step scan measurements give you a very high spectral resolution and also a very high time resolution. This can be used to characterize laser sources. The high resolution in the spectral and in the time domain allows you to analyze the shape and the length of single laser pulses. Vacuum systems even offer advantages for samples that can't be brought into the vacuum. An example for that would be protein studies in life science. These samples are typically in aqueous solution and therefore can't be brought into the vacuum. However, in vertex systems, it is possible to just evacuate the optical compartment. This way, you still have most of the beam path under vacuum conditions. Protein bands overlap with water bands, so the reduction of the water influence is crucial here to detect small signals and to detect subtle changes over time. Aggregation studies can also last very long, and there the very stable background conditions of a vacuum system come into play. When you're working in the far infrared or even the terahertz region, you're dealing with small signals and strong water absorption. Here, a vacuum system can offer significant improvements. Also, if you want to connect your FTIR spectrometer to an ultra-high vacuum system, it makes a lot more sense to also have your FTIR spectrometer under vacuum conditions. Further applications that benefit from vacuum conditions are, for example, when you want to use a cryostat, you want to perform high-resolution spectroscopy, you want to perform emission spectroscopy, and many more. As you can see, there are a lot of applications that benefit from vacuum conditions. And the only way to get this benefit is by going for a Bruca vacuum system from the Vertex series. I hope you found this video helpful, and I will see you next time.